Newfoundland is a serene island on the northwest end of Canada. For comparison, it is roughly the size of the US state of New York but with less than 3% of its population. So, there is a wide open country to explore and has a remarkable geological history formed over many millions of years. If you plan on flying to Newfoundland, the most convenient way to navigate this island is by renting a car. If you want to drive to this island instead, then there are just two gateways from the mainland, Nova Scotia and Quebec. The journey from North Sydney to Channel Porto Basque is a year-around ferry that departs from Nova Scotia. Alternatively, you can venture from Blanc Seblen connecting to St. Barb. And there is a seasonal ferry that connects North Sydney to Urgentia, offering a scenic route closer to the heart of it all, the vibrant city of St. John's. Since we were driving from the US, we took the ferry from North Sydney to Channel Porto Basque to enter Newfoundland. This video is all about how to book the ferry, the boarding process with your vehicle and the facilities that are available on the ferry. The ferry booking process is refreshingly straightforward. Marine Atlantic website is easy to navigate. You can enter passenger and pet details, vehicle information, And the accommodation options are laid out with simplicity. They offer cabins complete with in-room showers for those seeking extra comfort. Alternatively, you can opt for the free general seating or go for more cushy, selectable seats ideal for a touch of private space. Keep an eye out for occasional promotions. I've spotted discounts for 25% off often during quieter seasons. The ferry sets sail twice daily with departures available at noon and at 11 pm. We booked our tickets over two months ago. We opted for the noon ferry, which gives us a chance to admire the vast expanse of the ocean and the beautiful scenery as well as show you the cabin experience of the ferry. Unfortunately, on the day we were set to sail, a massive storm hit Nova Scotia and our ferry got cancelled. We got an email regarding the situation and they offered to reschedule for the same night. But we lost the cabin as they were fully booked. Oh, and here's a handy tip. Fuel up before you hop aboard. Gas tends to be a bit friendlier to your wallet back in Nova Scotia. The check-in is 2 hours before departure. We gave it a shot and asked about available cabins, but there were none available. So with our boarding passes in hand, we joined the line in our designated lane. We barely waited 10 minutes before letting us board. Looming before us, the MV Blue Putties.
With a capacity for over 400 cars and 90 tractor trailers, this maritime giant was our vessel for the journey. It was really interesting to watch how the vehicles are directed towards their parking spaces. Once on board, the lower decks where the cars were neatly tucked in were off limits once the ferry set sail. So pack whatever you need with you for the journey. And so began our voyage spanning a distance of 96 nautical miles over the course of roughly 7 hours. Level 7 and 8 are the passenger decks each offering its own unique experiences. The seventh level housed a range of amenities, including a restaurant serving up breakfast and lunch. Additionally, there was a cafe where you could grab a sandwich, soup or a pizza. And if you're looking for locally crafted goods or travel items, there is a small retail store. But mind that everything is a bit expensive here, so packing some food or snacks ahead would be a good idea. Level 8 has cabins and the reserved seating space, but that is unfortunately off limits for us tonight. We had a bowl of beef soup, picked our seats and spent our night. Quick tip! If you want to pick the best seats, you might want to board the ferry early because when we got there, most of the seats were occupied and remaining filled up quickly. Next day, we woke up to a beautiful morning with a gorgeous view of Newfoundland from the ferry. Since our car was nestled on the lower deck, it gave us sufficient time to explore the upper deck where we could take in more of the surrounding beauty. Coming to the cost, in our original booking, we had secured a comfortable two-bed cabin which was refunded back. As for the total fare, it came to a modest sum of 201 Canadian dollars and 76 cents. I hope you found these insights helpful. Keep an eye out for my upcoming video where I'll be sharing our return ferry journey from St. Barb to blanc seblen if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I invite you to do so. Feel free to drop any questions you may have in the comments. Until we meet again, safe travels.